Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. We're about to start episode 4, Turnabout Beginnings. Uh, I believe I said last time that this episode is probably the shortest in the game. Uh, it might be longer than I'm remembering it being because it says part 1-1 one, one there. Uh, it is very short though, so maybe that's deliberately there as a misdirection, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's jump in and start Turnabout Beginnings. The girl. Let her go. I forget whose voice this is. <laughs> I don't know who's talking. Sh shut up. C come closer and I kill her. Sorry but you're not going to get the chance. Bang. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Name, Terry Falls. Charge, kidnapping, murder. Sentence, death penalty. Fugitive movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who'd recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey, first trial. You'll remember we took us on her second trial earlier in this game? Now we're going back to the beginning. You'll notice that this trial is not really a tutorial case, even though it's her first, which is interesting, because the second one was very much a tutorial case. February 16th, 9.24am. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 4. Ugh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm gonna die. I never should have accepted this case. Eek! Ah! G -g -g Good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. Uh, I didn't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Terry Folds, my first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now, a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Uh, um, so why did you escape, anyway? Ah, 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 Eek! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ugh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ugh. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, ah! Eek, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it. I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true, he did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. I it's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Huh. You're not going to figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. Y you're... Why are you here? I came to see how a little kitten was doing all alone in the big, scary lion's den. Yeah, I think you probably know who this is. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. 
Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha! That old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. Yep, that's his real name. Uh, I didn't say... So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices is here for me? Exposition. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine. An escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, th thanks. I sure wish I'd get out of it, though. Ha! Relax, I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. R really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned a reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. G genius Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours, it's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple, childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. February 16th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Look who it is. <laughs> I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers? Y y y yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone is talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. How old is Mia in this case? I can't tell because I am Mia. It doesn't show myself in the profiles. Hmm. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we had to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was... A certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. Uh-oh. For those who are not aware, Eagle Weather is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned. That wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha! Uh -huh, I see! The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago with only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm... Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now! Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious the defendant is guilty. Shit. Wait a minute, that's not right! At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor! 
Oh. Watch yourself, Ms. Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite! <laughs> now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I called the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Oh, look who it is. Witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe, I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? W what is it? You... You're really gorgeous. <laughs> Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up in contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Uh, okay, uh, I got it. <sighs> Jeez, don't flirt with the defense attorney. Gross. <laughs> now, detective, tell us about the incident. I mean, she is really pretty, but, but she's not interested. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir, I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under here is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm, I see. Dusky Bridge map added to the court record. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honour. If you will dis listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I was some hoser. Yeah, I think this judge is supposed to be Canadian, but I don't know how to do that with my voice. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay now, listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defence please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honour. Cross-examination. Coming right up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I, I, I'm not tr trembling. It, it's, it's just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I, I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean, the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. Ha, huh, you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. It's okay, Mia, stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. This is the reason that this isn't a tutorial case, because Mia stayed up watching videos last night explaining how to do courtrooms. <laughs> it's pretty silly. Okay. Uh, onwards. Uh, there is, I believe, a contradiction here somewhere. Let me just flip through a little bit. 
Uh, I think we just want to start by pressing. There we go. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. The victim's note added to the court record. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. <laughs> Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Ha! Huh. Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that... a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. He is very cute. Look at that face. He looks so soft. Hmm. Uh, we can have a look at the note if we want. Falls, 4.30pm at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. The whole truth must come out. That's gonna be important. <laughs> a bridge up in the mountains? But why meet there? Because it is a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ha! Huh. Returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move, we've got you surrounded. Wait a second, isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Ha! Huh. If that's what had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, 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 of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's what the bod what, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that... that doesn't look too, too comfortable. Crime photo added to the court record. It's a victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but... The knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? Anyway. I see something strange. <laughs> what did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it, I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing? I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Uh... Sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. 
Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. I mean, I can see something strange, but I forget what you're supposed to do to point it out. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5pm. We figured that Mr. Fout Falls might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30pm. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kinda close. Any later and Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A t trap Walk into it carelessly, and I'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not. Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. Oh, actually, there's another problem with this. With this, uh, if we take a quick look at the information we've got so far, we know that Valerie was going to wear a white scarf for identification. Do you see a scarf in this picture? Because I sure don't. <laughs> Witness. What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is... this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Brr, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Hmm, say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're too, still too young to be drinking real coffee. Brr. Come on, Mia, shake it off, you're a lawyer. Detective! Y yes ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it, is that correct? Y yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The n n n note It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it. Ah! The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? <sighs> I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you were searching so desperately for. Is this the- is, is it this one, perchance? Ah! Where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. Hmm, that hotshot sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white, as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Hmm, looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Scarf added to the court record. Now, if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence that Ms. Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Ugh, everything is moving at his whim. 
Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Events on Dusky Bridge. Hmm. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. It looks more like a white scarf in the picture instead of like a blue one. He was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm, looking at this photo... You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It is about a 40 foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha, a potential witness! So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honour. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Witness this photo added to the court record. So, as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. N not again! That's not fair! I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? <laughs> okay. Uh... I kind of like the idea that Detective Gumshoe is wearing the same coat he will be in the future. It's just a lot cleaner in the past, and that's why it's so much whiter. It's just a very dirty coat. <laughs> Who is this eyewitness? She's a college student. A female college student? That's right, meaning she's female and a college student, ma'am. She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements, that is all. What is that supposed to mean? Prosecution has other, more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. Female college student, eh? It means she's female and a college student, sir. Thanks for explaining how adjectives work. If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give us a good reason why. Grr. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. The victim is wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So, about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. S spirits? Now that you mention it, th this photo, this cloudy fog-like thing, I is it a ghost? I, I don't believe it. No, Your Honor, no. I don't think it's a ghost. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. Haha. <laughs> Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. I even slipped and fell when I was on the bridge. It was really something. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm... I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? Or does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. Yeah, I think he's Canadian. Ha. Save your nasty look for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. 
court record, huh? Diego's kind of weird. Okay, so the problem here is that if uh, she was shoved, if um, Valerie was shoved down on her tummy on the bridge, the bridge is covered in mud. So you would think that this photograph, she'd have mud on her coat, which she clearly doesn't. It's a very clean coat. So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. This is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions that day? It's, it's, it's here, it's a coat. Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was a twizzling and foggy, dusky bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then her front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Ugh. That... that's exactly right. The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befell. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honour had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, but not muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge, huh? Ha! Huh, a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. I'd forgotten that Diego was so... sexist. <laughs> Of course I can. Here is the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. It's pretty simple. This scarf is very muddy. And it was, you know, came from the victim and it landed on the bridge. It's covered in mud. The evidence is this scarf. Ah, it should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means that the bridge was obviously covered in mud. No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Jesus. Hey, same to you, buddy. This this novice himbo. <laughs> this case is a lot more sexist than I remembered. Like overall, Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the con condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However. The real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation is in this case may be, shall we? Uh, Alright, it's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha! Huh. You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. M Mr. Armando! No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. The witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim. Or the witness's testament said she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. Hmm. What you said just now, I'm not sure I like that. Th that wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. Aficionado. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know? Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. I yes! False evidence in this case is the... Okay, clearly there was really a body in the trunk because the police found it. Um... I think the witness's testimony is the one that's wrong. I, I'm suspicious of the photo too, but the testimony is a problem. 
It is a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. Ah, it's not just true, it's, it's the truth. If there was a truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy, I want that boy wonder over there would have called him in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. <sighs> you should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness. What is your name and occupation? Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double-double in a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Hey, hey, not so fast. <sighs> As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Fay, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Hmm? Huh? Yes, my dear? This is my first time, so I'm sure we'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hmm, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then, can we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. Hmm. I'm a college student, a, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo? Is that accurate? Wah! Uh, how can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalise you. Uh-oh. I don't like the turn this has taken. Is she... staring at me? Um, and you would be? Huh? Uh, I'm the defense attorney. My name is Mia Faye. I see. So you are... Oh, sorry. So you are... Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I I'll do my best. The witness's photograph. I... I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then, I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and looked at the photo that shows the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. Hmm... By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. 
I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Ho ho ho, what a cute camera. Just like its owner. Alright then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. I forget if we're allowed to press on just anything in this testimony or not. I might check down a save before we start pressing, just in case. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, let's see if we're allowed to press. Did you say wildflowers? Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wildflowers. Um, but it's only February. Well, I... I couldn't wait for spring to come. Oh, I know just how you feel. It's just like when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just couldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew in properly. Would you mind if we got back to the facts of the case, Your Honor? Okay, looks like we can press no problem. Cool. Was there anything strange about the two of them? I... I'm a bad girl. I know I am. It looked like they were having a really serious conversation up there, so I decided to watch them, like some kind of peeping Tom. No, not at all. Everyone is like that. I love watching other people fight, too. In fact, I can't get enough of it. Actually, that's why I took this job in the first place. Too much info, Your Honor. In any case, it's perfectly natural for you to have kept watching them, especially dressed as they were. Well, anyway, I was watching them very closely. Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? <gasps> no, I have no idea. Why do you ask that? Oh, I just thought that maybe you overheard what they said? Never. I would never eavesdrop. I've got more class than that. That's right, Miss Faye. You don't drag the witness down to your level. Why did you take a photo? Well, the two of them were really going at it. Ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a news reporter. I guess that part of me just kind of took over. Smells like a lie to me. Yes, I understand completely. Even now, I can't completely abandon my boyhood dreams. I still use my grandson to test my comedy routines on. So I wanted to be a comedian, huh? Not that it has any bearing on this. All I could do was, use my, was to use my camera. So I took the photo of the crucial moment and gave it to the police. If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, then there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That girl has the judge wrapped right around her little finger. You're going to have to have, you're going to have a tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers. You're going to have to come up with something really good, but yeah. Ugh, bit of a yawn there, sorry. Okay, so the problem here... If you have a look at that photo... Not that photo, the one the witness took. That's this one. Would you call this a crucial moment? I mean, you can't see anyone being stabbed, you can't see anyone really fighting, they're just sort of standing there. I would not call this the crucial moment. If I were trying to photograph a crime, I would probably take more than one photograph and try to capture the parts where some crime actually happens. Objection. Witness, when you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Uh... All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally that's the kind of thing we refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm. Hmm. Doll. Oh. Uh, um, my apologies, young lady, but Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay a situation, can't he? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. 
Oh right, yeah, this story is really dated. Remember when cameras used film? <laughs> you ran out of film? Uh, this photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all the photographs she took that day. All the other photos of the witness herself playing among the wildflowers. I kind of wish we got to see that, because that'd be pretty adorable. <laughs> witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. So you took photos of yourself? Hmm, I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details. It seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Oh, wait, just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Ms. Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Very well then, let's get back to the cross-examination. I don't remember if I'm doing the same voice for this character I was doing before. There's been a couple of cases. I think I may have been a little more adorable. I'll, I'll try. I'll try if I can. I'll try and change it up a bit. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. Ha! It looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. Yeah, I think her voice was a bit breathier, sort of like this. I, I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's closer. I hope that's right. If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Okay, I've already seen this. Okay, so we have some testimony now. The victim turned around and tried to run away, but she only got about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. Okay, so we have a problem here. See, if the victim turned around and tried to run away, uh, look at where they're look at the way they're standing, and then have a look at the map of the bridge. Only one side of the bridge exists. So if she tried to run away from Terry Falls, she would have been running off the end of the bridge. Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But, but I, I just... Ms. Faye, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's simple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. According to our testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well, then... She would have hit a dead end. You said ten yards, but she couldn't, even have, couldn't have run even five. Because Dusky Bridge has collapsed on that side. Wah! Wah! <laughs> what does it all mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court? Just a moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What are you saying? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. S so you're saying? I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair, there's no evidence that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. Th that's ridiculous. You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologise to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. That guy is good. 
Huh? What do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was insurance policy. What? That coward. Well, Miss Faye, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. N no, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish, once and for all, what it was the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... it's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Y yes sir I think I've got a voice down, down pat again, but I'm not sure. Hopefully this is right. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked, up, picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm. Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it, as it is, we're finished. D don't say that. Oh well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favourite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. Ha. Huh. That's what I like to hear. Alright, Miss Faye. Cross-examination, if you please. The contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Okay, so the problem with this, uh, he couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge, but there was another way to get the body to stay hidden, which is to throw it in the river. Because there's a river just there, which is like a really good place to dump a body, it turns out. Funny thing about rivers. A killer not wanting his victim to be found, I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. <gasps> if ten murders would occur at that same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed that body in the water. Order, order, order. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Fay, but I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Ooh. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? <sighs> How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Miss Faye, it seems your assertion is without merit after all. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Ugh. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. Uh, I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what, only what you saw. Otherwise the mean lady might yell at you again. What's he talking about? Alright, I'll do my best. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms, then he carried her over to the car. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. Uh. Okay. The problem with this is... There is no possible way she could have seen that, because she's standing on the opposite side of that big cliff there. Objection! Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. 
Done what? Made a crucial mistake. A cr crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Y yes. And? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. The place you claim to have taken the photo from, from that day, is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Ah! That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. Ah! I, I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. Th that's right. It, it's not high at all. I, I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Your own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge, but the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ah! Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff, but still you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. No! Oh, order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human, to forgive divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? That's not fair! Ha! Save the tears for later, kitten. M Mr. Armando! Don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. B but But that wasn't fair! Okay, kitten. You need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell me, how did she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk. Because... because there were marks left in the trunk lid. I'm certain they were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. True. These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? Doesn't work. Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers. But even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when? When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally. I finally got her. Ha. Huh, I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She put the corpse in herself. 
There's only one way that witness had the, ch that the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Y yes? What is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? Th that's ridiculous. I could never. It was the man in the prison garb. He he's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one who put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple who had been waiting at a red light, which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. Uh, oh, uh, I see. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. No! Preposterous. It even suggests that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know that at the time, she was taking photographs. Now is your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Yeah, the camera has a timer function. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. Objection. What are you trying to say then, Ms. Fay? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm, would the defense please explain further? Listen. This is a crucial point. Where was Ms. Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Ms. Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? You ready? She was here. Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's... That's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order, order, order. Miss Faye, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine, of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo is not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your very- it's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. M me Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You were just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like. White scarf for identification. Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. 
namely this muddy scarf. Ah! It was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? <laughs> no, no, no! Uh, uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Ha. Huh. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well, this court is in recess. Recess? To be continued. <laughs> and that's part one complete. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I got the voices right. Um... It's been a while since I voiced these particular characters since they were in the first case, so I don't super remember. Hopefully I got it right. Anyway, next time we'll do part one, two trial. Thank you for watching. Bye.